Yes, guys, what's up? So, finally, after a long, long time, we've got um, Amir Khan coming off a win against Chris Algieri. Amir, how you doing, bro? Yeah, good, man. It's good to be back home. It's been a long time. I've been back in... Uh, be back, to be back in the UK. I was over in the US for like three and a half months. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, missed missed everything over here. The weather, even though it rains all the time, but missed everything here. Amir, let's just get straight into it, right? Yeah. Chris Algieri, you didn't... Pu- Chris Algieri brought yeah. it, yeah? Yeah, he but brought it, yeah. You time, didn't... Yeah. Perform I didn't bring what? it. You didn't bring I it. Didn't bring it. Yeah, I didn't bring it. You know what, bro? I swear, like it was a um, week of the fight. I mean, even before, I just didn't feel the best. Um, I mean, no excuses, you know. But even even the day before the fight, I got a bit of sniffles as well. And I said, I got, I got my dad to get me some. Um, it's called Zycam and all these, you know, medication and stuff, just to kind of take, make sure I'm not, I'm not gonna get a cold. Mm. But regardless, of that I just think I overdid it, man. I overtrained or something like that. I, I didn't feel the best. I mean. You know, whenever I do like a like for the press, you do all the training a week before the fight. You have the media there. You know, normally when I used to hit the mitts, you feel that power through the point uh, for the mitts, and you feel like ex- ex- explosiveness, that speed, that power, power follow through. Yeah, everything. It just wasn't there this time. I just seemed very flat. And I remember when you know I was warming up and we were getting ready to walk out to the um, ring. The PBC is a little different where you have the stage yeah, and then yeah. you walk. So yeah, I yeah. stood behind the apron for like I think it was about five minutes. So I'm warming myself up. I'm just trying to psych myself up, thinking oh, I just need to get into this a little bit more. You know what I mean? I need to just get get that adrenaline rush and get in, get zoned. But I just didn't seem to have it. That's why maybe towards the end of the fight, like late the second half of the fight, I started to get a little bit better and see shots better and stuff. But um, yeah, man, I just got caught a few shots. A flat. Yeah, I felt really flat, really flat. I felt, I felt really flat and just couldn't get really myself going. I'm my biggest critic, you know, when I see something that I was like, right, I'm gonna say, it. look, everyone knows that if I'd fought like I did in my last couple of fights, I would have been a lot better, but I just didn't seem to get in. You can't always fight at your best all the time. It was a long camp, a long time away from my family. And also it was, it was, it was a long, hard camp as well. So Amir, you're saying I've lost weight. Yeah. But you don't look as big as you did in the last fights. You know, did you do strength conditioning for this fight? I did. I did, I did the strength conditioning. Yeah, I did. But you know, um, we stopped it a little bit earlier mm. uh, because I got a few little injuries, so I had to stop. But um, you know, I saw I saw a few pictures people posted like the fight against Alexander Klazo and then this fight. There was lying offense in that as well. I posted one. <laughs> well, yeah, did you post that? Yeah, there was I a few lying. Like, damn, I was, like, was that the same one? I was like, really? Was that, was yeah, that, yeah. Was that me? No, but no, I, I know it's like... back and nothing nah, unless they edited it and put that Do you know what it is? I know there's lying effects in the MGM ground yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. But even then, your core didn't look like yeah, yeah, as yeah. big and you, even now you're not looking as full as you did then. Yeah, like I, I only went, you know what, you believe it or not, but I went into ring at like 153. Mm-hmm. I'm never on that light in the ring. Um, even when I used to be like when I used to be 140, then I used to go into the ring at 153. But I went into the ring at 153, um, 154. I was hydrated and everything. It was just that um, the muscle wasn't as dense or as thick. I wasn't. Um, yeah, so maybe I might have cut weight a little earlier and stayed around the 151 mark a bit too long. When I should really, I used to be like 156 normally and come down there. I walk and and if you look at when I fought Alexander and Kalaza, I went up to like 159 mm-hmm. against. Kalaza 161 against Alexander that was sort of the way it was mm-hmm. and I think I, I feel better that way much more natural but you know what I thought the whole procedure to making the weight light was because I thought our view was going to run so, you so I thought I being light, as well. being light and quick thing, yeah. will be always there I want to be quick on my feet you know I don't want him because he normally is quite slick where he'll move and he'll hit you you know and you need fast feet to get under that and stay in but obviously he did opposite to what he what he needs. So really, if I'd stayed the same natural weight I normally was for the Alexander fight, I think I would have been he- a lot heavier, a lot better, where he would have been able to chase me or push me around really. But look, he, his strategy was good. Oh, I can't we, you can't take anything away from him because his his trainer gave him a good game plan to follow, and they 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 come to fight. Can't take when when a guy makes his mind up to win. You know that's one thing that like Virgil told me as well. So when a guy goes in there and says, I'm going to win this fight, no matter what, if I have to go through hell, I will go through hell. Once you make, make your mind up to win a fight, it's very hard to beat a guy like that. It's very hard to beat a guy. Amir, I haven't asked you this before, right? Um, I was going to ask you last time, but yeah, yeah. I didn't. I've been, in good, I've been in contact with Rick for quite a while. And yeah. I know you've been in contact. And I know you like Yeah, Rick's a nice guy. He's always wishing you the best. Yeah, he's always wishing you the best. Yeah, 
do you think it would be beneficial at all? Now I know Virgil's yeah. a great trainer, he's done yeah, great Virgil, stuff Virgil, with you, yeah. yeah. But do you think it would be beneficial at all for you, in your opinion, not Khan, not Khan's camp or anyone else, yeah. you? Do you think it would be beneficial for you to bring Rick in? Not Virgil, not anyone else. Do you think it would benefit you? Well, you know what? It's, it's different. It's different because obviously I know what Rick, Rick tries to teach you the quickness and the movement and you know, having the hands up and everything. But look, it's different to what we need to do. Obviously, look, against the Alexander fight and the Colossus fight, we didn't really need it. But because we had a little bit of a, bad, a, bit of a bad performance here, we might people might think, you know what? It'd be good to maybe bring him in. Look, I'm going to probably... Let's, let's give one more fight and see how we are. Obviously, I just think this was a bit of a, a little bit a bad of performance. A, yeah, bad performance really. It happens to all of us. Yeah. All fighters go have a bad performance. Maybe that one against Maidana in the it, first exactly. fight. Exactly. Yeah, so look, happens. it's just a bad performance. That's it. But it's how you come back from it. And um, yeah, so hopefully, um, I think that's what it is really. But look, Wick's a very good trainer. Very good trainer. Don't get me wrong. He's very skillful. Teaches you a lot on the mix and stuff. But look, I, I got a team set there. And what's I don't really working? Want, yeah, what's working for me? I don't really want to mess that up because. You know, sometimes by doing chin a few things can mess everything up. At the moment, you know, I'm alright with things. Look, I don't mind training with Rick when I'm in New York and doing a little bit with him, but he's, he's a very good trainer. But let's just see how things go. I'm gonna give it another fight or two. But Virgil, you know, Virgil's good at what he does. And you're gonna have bad days in the office, it's normal. Now, Amir, and I read um, an article saying that you want to be a bit more of your own boss now. Yeah. Um, when I saw you training up to this fight, I saw Virgil working on something, which uh, maybe you can explain it, because obviously you've been in the ring, you've worked with Virgil a lot. He was saying throw the jab at a constant same speed. Yeah. Like, don't, uh, does that not take away your quickness and a bit of your, like, take away your greatest asset, which is your speed, if you're constantly punching at the at the same pace? Um, I think that was more like a conditioning thing, just getting them, you know, strengthening the, the, the muscles, really. Mm. Um, but yeah, I know what you mean. If you working a, working on that as a method like, to get you away from trouble or hit a guy, then they're gonna time you. Yeah. You work at one pace. Yeah. So it's just about changing the pace of it, changing the speed of the punch. Like with my dad as well. He, since he's working with Robert Garcia, he's like sometimes he throws his job fast, sometimes it's slow. Slow. Yeah. You can see the, up, yeah. the fight. It definitely, off, definitely. And I think little things that make a massive difference. You have to. You can't throw his punch at the same speed all the time because then you get timed. Um, but no, no. Look, there's a few things that me and Virgin to sit down and work around. And work on, mm -hmm. uh, but like I said, it's still new. But you know, think about it. It's only been two, two years and a bit years. Me and Virgil have been working together, so it's not a long time that we've been together. And obviously, we're still working on a few things new and things are working for me. Some things are not going to work for me. So I'm glad in a sense that this happened. Mm -hmm. Like we've had a hard fight. I'm going to go back to drawing board now. The things that I'm not happy about, I'm going to open up now and say, look, Virgil, I'm not happy about this. The things I was doing right, I'm going to stick to. But the things I'm not happy about. You're change and and also I know yeah I'm gonna change but I know Virgil will want to change as well because obviously Virgil is gonna be like I don't think this worked so let's forget this and do this instead mm -hmm. but there's a few other things that I'm gonna be doing differently but I can I can honestly say you will see a different Amir Khan like in the next fight you'll definitely see a different fight a fighter uh, it, this was just a little bit of a uh, it was just stumble. a bad night a little stumble it was and obviously we got the win that's the main thing but it was just it wasn't the best performance but look. I think people expect a little bit too much of you and it's not only that but it's just you know with with going into this fight having that pressure everywhere in America expecting go, you to do really well yeah, in really well, fight. like knock this guy out and at the same time mention um, you know Mayo is next you know Mayo is next sometimes you don't need that pressure you, you don't want to talk about Mayo I saw you flipping out on one of the reports yeah, man, I was like and, that's not good man and I'm like look you're talking about Mayo to me mm. uh, if I answer that question what's going to happen is they're going to say well if I get beat in a fight or if I get lose some, anything can happen they're going to say you're looking past it no, no, they can't say that because I kept selling everyone at the press conference. Look, guys, I'm not looking past this fight. Please don't talk about me with That's why they could have said, if I didn't say those words, they would have said, I'm here looking past this fight. That's why it was a bad performance. Mm. So you see, it's, it's very hard, man. We're in a very tough sport here where, yeah. you know, you have to be mentally focused and, fo and right. Look, Saj is looking at you through the mirror. He's not looking happy with you. He's going to bang you out when he sees you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> right, so Floyd Mayweather, let's talk about yeah. it now because you've beaten Chris Algieri. Um... Do you think the fight can happen? I, I think it can, for sure, because financially it makes sense. Um, makes sense where Floyd, you know, wants... It's going to help Floyd's, Floyd's fan base, especially that part, the other side of the world, like Pakistan, India, uh, Dubai, um, UK. It's only going to... I mean, the UK fans want it. Obviously, um, you know, people in Pakistan would love to see that fight and I imagine having a press conference there. <laughs> it'd be mad. Yeah, you know it'd what be mean? crazy. But you know, um, and Dubai same again. But the thing is, look, 
uh, Al Heyman advises me and advises me with it. I think he can make the fight happen. But at the moment, um, I'm just gonna leave it to him. I'm not really focusing on it. I'm just gonna stay back, you know, lay low at the moment and let him go and make the make the moves. And he'll come back and approach me and say, "Look, I mean, this is what, who I think." And if it's not him, look, there's other names there. There's like Keith Thurman there. You've got you got Broner there. You've got Marquez, Bradley. You've got the um, um, Pacquiao there. Guerrero as well. I mean, some, some decent names there, you know what I mean? Still, the welterweight division is still uh, good and I can get some good fights out there. So, let's just see. I mean, we're just gonna. I'm, I'm gonna take time off, not think about boxing for after this press conference, just chill. Ramadan. Take a week, yeah. Ramadan's coming up. Yeah, uh, just wanna wish everyone happy Ramadan. Um, hope hope they all, um, you know, pray and keep the rules in and everything because obviously, you know, Ramadan comes once a year and it's a mental thing, you know, mentally getting through it and thinking about the poor people around the world who who um, who fast also, but at the same time, the one thing what makes it easy for us is we know at the end of the day, end of the day we got hot food plate ready for waiting for us. Our mums are cooking food or you know, they're cooking food in the eat afternoon and it's for getting ready for the night time. Whereas there's poor people out there who still go out, work, they come home and there's still not food for them there. So the Ramadan's about remembering the poor people, you know what I mean? And what Amirkan Foundation is doing, you know, we want to start supporting, you know, the poor people around there. And this only kind of motivates me for, you know, to do more for my foundation, to go to these places around the world, like Africa, India, Pakistan, and help the poor people around the world. And boxing's put me in a position like this where, you know, I can do that now. So it's all about just helping the poor people around the world. I'm lucky to be in a position like this, and I just want to try to, you know, kind of just help whoever I can, really. It's yeah. very tough. And yeah, we're doing iftar tour by the way as well. We're gonna be going to I think eighteen different. Um, Am I invited? Yo, oh, listen, you're always invited, bro. With the camera, but let's bring you. Let's go all the way. We're gonna be doing an iftar tour, mm. which is gonna be going to different areas. And you know, Ramadan's about giving, giving to the poor, giving back. Now these charity events are gonna be, you know, let's give back to the poor people. Mm. Let's go build orphanages, schools, um, feed kids, build clean water wells. Sanitation, health and safety. I mean, we want to do everything for the people around the world. There's a lot of poverty around the world that people need to realize, and we're here to help them. Right, Amir, before the whole team can comes and kills and me, takes, yeah, no, and let's take some swords and knock up. Thank you, Amir. Let's call it a day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Amir King can be real TV. Thank you, guys. I said, be real all the time. Respect, bro. <laughs>